Why is the cloud so important? And what are the benefits? Why everybody wants to get in the cloud? The first thing is the cloud is cost effective. How so? The reason is that you pay only for your usage. If you don't use any resources, you need to shut them down and you don't pay for them. The cloud uses a consumption based model that allows you to pay only for what you use, similar to electricity, water, or previously the phone bill. You pay only when you make calls. There are no upfront costs. You can use any kind of resources in the cloud without paying nothing at the beginning. You don't need to make any large investments in order to use those resources. You can stop paying for resources you don't need. Once again, if you don't need it, you can shut it down and you can save on your bill. This allows you to make a better cost prediction. For example, if you have a business that has seasonal spikes, you can predict that during certain months of the year, you can have higher bill and other months you have a lower bill in the cloud. The cloud is also scalable. What that means is that it has practically unlimited resources that you can use. There are two ways to actually scale your resources. One of them is called vertical scaling, or this is scale up. Take for example, a server. Let's say when you provision your server, initially you ask for the server to have only two CPU cores and four gigabytes of memory. You can monitor this server and see that actually more and more requests are coming and your business is growing and any more, not anymore, you cannot use the current server to satisfy all the requests. What you can do is you can add more CPUs and more memory to this server. Let's say you go from two CPUs to four CPUs and from four gigabyte memory to eight gigabyte memory. And this is what is called scale up. However, new architectures, they prefer the so-called horizontal scaling, which means that instead of in adding more CPUs and more memories to your existing server, you add a new server that has the same capacity as the previous one, and you load balance the request between those two servers. This is called horizontal scaling or also scale out. The scaling can be done manually or automatic. For example, if you have a person who constantly sits and monitors the uh, capacity that uh, your servers have, and if there is a, a need for more capacity, they can go and add manually a separate server. If you have a program or a script that does that, you can automatically scale your servers. The cloud is also elastic. What does elastic means? Elastic means that you can increase and decrease the use of your resources based on the demand. The example that I gave previously, where you have seasonal spikes of your business, that's what elasticity means. You can add more resources when you need them, let's say during your uh, high season, and remove those resources when you don't need them during the low season and don't pay for them. This means that the cloud can accommodate your unexpected spikes. If you have automatic scaling implemented in your cloud workloads, you can actually sleep well and not worry that, for example, during the night, more people are coming to your website because of an unexpected event. And once again, you can reduce the consumption during low use. So again, automatic scaling allows you to also remove resources when you don't need them. The cloud is up to date. What that means is that you can leverage the latest hardware. The cloud vendors are taking care to actually uh, procure this hardware. The only thing you need to do is to go and purchase it from the self-service the cloud vendors provide. You don't need to uh, have very large investments in order to buy the latest uh, GPUs or the latest ASICs processors in order to, to use them. You can just rent them from the cloud. New hardware is added when it becomes available. 
The same is true also for the latest software. The cloud vendors are actually giving more and more options for you the, uh, to use any kind of software up to the latest versions. So you don't need to pay licensing fees for uh, procuring the software or wait until it comes out or gets delivered over mail. Of course, this lowers the IT maintenance cost, so you don't need to actually have personnel provisioning any of the hardware or installing the software and so on and so on. The cloud is also reliable. The cloud vendors, they have redundant data centers around the world and they use those to actually replicate your data and make it uh, secure. If one of the data center fails, you can rely that actually your data is safe in another one. This is called a redundant or fault tolerant services. What that means is that each one of the services the cloud vendor provides is uh, available in multiple copies and your requests can go to one or the other of those copies and you can rely that each one of those will always be up and running to serve your requests. Of course, the uh, cloud vendors, they take care of data backups and replications. As I said, they use those uh, redundant data centers to replicate the data and make sure that it's never lost. And they take also care of disaster recovery. So they invest in redundant backup supplies, UPSs, redundant power generators, uh, and so on, in order to make sure that the data is kept safe. Another benefit of the cloud is that the cloud is global. Each cloud vendor has, once again, multiple data centers around the world. So if you have a global business, you can rely that actually there will be a data center close to your customer in Europe or Asia or Australia if you need to. This is also important if you need to meet some data residency and compliance laws. For example, certain countries in the world, they require that data of their citizens is kept within the region or the country itself. If you need to do that, you can use the cloud data centers of the cloud vendor, which are in this particular country and save the data there. The cloud is also secure, despite what uh, many people think. What that means is that the cloud vendors, they invest in physical security. Their data centers are very well protected. They have video surveillance, uh, security personnel, uh, high walls that do not allow external people to get in. They have well-established policies and controls that they have built over a long experience that they are uh, having building data centers. And of course, they have very experienced personnel that uh, actually takes care of the data centers. One important thing to remember is that this is actually shared between the cloud vendor and you. That the cloud vendor provides secure data center doesn't mean that your application is secure. You still are responsible for securing your application, making sure that unauthorized people or users are not able to access it. This is called the shared security model. How do the cloud vendors achieve this? They achieve it thanks to the so-called economies of scale. When they have so many data centers and so many servers and hardware, they actually can achieve some certain efficiency of managing those because this is a repeated task that they have automated and they can do it much faster than a small uh, uh, data center provider. They also can provide a lower cost per unit because they can actually get discounts for buying hardware in bulk or software in bulk or any utilities in bulk. They can actually get a lower tax and utility uh, bills because they can negotiate with the local authorities or the tax um, uh, government tax authorities in order to actually get lower taxes and uh, buying uh, utilities in bulk. This can be true for electricity, for uh, water if they're using uh, water cooling, for high-speed network, and so on. 